What are the things that we can all do to help? This summer, we had a leadership retreat in May. As part of that leadership retreat, the whole leadership retreat was focused on what can we do to change our enrollment picture? What can we do to change our enrollment picture? And there were several key items that came out of that, and I want to share them with you because we're going to be working on these this year. And you will see that you've already heard about some of them. They've already been put in place. Many of them need our attention as we move forward this year. Some curricular and program, uh, cur programmatic innovations, that's really at the heart of the academic positioning work. But there are other things that we can be working on as well. What do we do for offering courses in the summer and winter? It's an opportunity for students to engage with this campus. We have resources. We know some students are looking for those short courses. What can we do? How can we make sure that we've got good hands-on uh, learning opportunities for all of our students? Students that are engaged in hands-on learning are more likely to stay, and it's the kind of experience that they're looking for coming out of high schools. We need to shorten the timeline to completion where we can and where it makes great sense to do so. Expanding our three plus two and our four plus one offerings, both on our campus but also with partner schools. What we've done with uh, the UNI at Iowa Community Colleges is a great example of ways that we have shortened the path line and opened and broadened the, path line, pa the pipeline for students to enter the University of Northern Iowa. In addition, we need to widen that pipeline, ways to get students in to this, and we need to tap into our alumni network and help them help us recruit students. We have teachers in every single school district in this state except for one at the last time I had it checked. We had alumni teachers in every single county of this state. They're a tremendous resource. At the state fair this last week, we had a special packet for anybody that was a teacher, whether they were a UNI alum or not. Those were a pretty hot item. People were asking for them. And they included a pennant. They included other swag for the classroom. People are putting these up around the state to help people, our prospective students, understand and learn more about the University of Northern Iowa. We need to create a more welcoming environment. One of the things that we need to really understand is that every single interaction that we have on this campus with somebody that doesn't work here is a recruitment effort, is a retention effort, is an effort to helping that student get here, get a great education, and graduate from this institution. Every single interaction, whether it's coming to a performance here in the Gallagher Blue Dorn and setting with people who are my age and older, they talk to friends, they talk to grandchildren, they talk to children, they talk to other people. The interactions that we have at athletic events, every single person that comes into one of our event areas is learning something and forming an opinion about the University of Northern Iowa. Every student that walks onto this campus forms an opinion about what it's like to be here the minute they drive in the parking lot, the minute they walk to the Campanile, the minute they meet one of us on the sidewalk and asks us a question, or we choose to smile at them or not even pay attention to their existence. All of those send a message about what it's like to be a student here, what it's like to be an employee here. We have to make sure that we're aggressively handling our and thinking about our commitment to recruiting students and making this a welcoming place for everyone, addressing the uh, microaggressions that we know occur, addressing all of the things that help us put forward the kind of welcoming environment that we hope to have on this campus. Everybody should feel that. We need to improve our retention, graduation, and completion rates. We talked a little bit about the strategic enrollment management plan and what those goals are. How can we do that? And here are some examples that came forward in the leadership retreat that we'll be working on building those out. What can we do? I want to spend just a little time talking about the rugby team. This is unique. We talk, we talk about athletics a lot, but the rugby team is not, part, uh, not an NCAA sport. It's a student organization here at the University of Northern Iowa, a student or They're a club team, men's rugby and women's rugby both. The women's rugby team, you can see in the top panel and the men's rugby on, on the bottom. And I'll talk about Aubrey Burish just a little bit. Our women's rugby team this year, they have a coach. There's no scholarships. They play for fun. 
They play in what's known as the Premier League in rugby, which means most of the teams they play are supported by their university, offer scholarships, and have full-time coaches. This fall, they finished second in the nation in the national tournament. They are a team that doesn't have that level of support. They play for fun, and they play very, very well. Aubrey Burish was on that team, and uh, now she's been, this summer, she got the opportunity to play on the under-23 national team for the United States in a series of games against Canada. She had a great time. She's uh, an elementary ed and, special, and, and early childhood development um, student uh, that loves to play the sport of rugby. Never played before she got here. We have two incoming students, women students, female students, that are going to play rugby for us. And this summer, they played on the under-18 team. They're coming here because of our rugby team. They're coming here because of our student organization called Rugby. Our student orgs have a tremendous opportunity for us to recruit students, whether they're an organization that deals with athletics like a rugby team, or whether they're an organization like Black Student Union that will celebrate its 50th anniversary this year. All of these student organizations have a tremendous power to help us recruit these students. Our men's rugby team finished uh, fourth in the, what's known as the 15s in the fall. This spring, they took the bronze medal in the sevens. Tremendous, again, no scholarships, playing against scholarship teams. Just a tremendous opportunity for us to continue to build out and highlight what our students do on their own, the commitment they make to their education, to their health, to this community. It's fun to watch these sorts of things happen. It's important for us to recognize that our student organizations and everything that we do and the opportunities we make available have an impact on our ability to recruit students, to retain those students, to graduate those students, and to have alumni that are leaders in their community, leaders in their profession, and great community members. So it's important for us to, to look at holistically our university. With that, one, thank you for everything that you do. It's uh, tremendous to be able to work here and to work with you. As I said uh, in the opening remarks, and as Jose mentioned, we've had the opportunity to, to meet with several of the students already, from the cheer team and the dance team, the Panther marching band, all these new freshmen that we're in, several other student groups that we've seen around. Yesterday I had lunch with the Jumpstart kids, students, and their mentors. What an engaging opportunity. These students have been here a week already, learning what it takes to be successful on this campus. Their mentors in particular were sharing stories about what they learned in Jumpstart and what it's meant to them here. But there's many of these Jumpstart students that have gone through Jumpstart that are now alumni. People like Skylar Mayberry May, who talks about how important Jumpstart was to him to finding a place here. And he talks about you and I from that position. So many of the alums that came from minority backgrounds, underserved backgrounds, come through Jumpstart, and it has a huge impact on their success here. They don't talk about that necessarily, occasionally. They talk about the impact it's had on their lives, personally and professionally. What we do here matters, and it matters in a big way to all of these students, but it matters to us as colleagues. The way that we work together, the way we engage, builds a community here for our students, but also for us. It is a pleasure and a real honor for me to work with you. I really enjoy working with the faculty and staff here because you are committed to helping all of these students meet their educational goals, their professional goals, and their personal life goals. That's why so many of them move into these leadership positions in various businesses and industries, but more importantly, maybe as importantly, in their communities and in community organizations. So thank you for your commitment to these students. Thank you for your commitment to each other to make this a great place to work, a great place to live, a great place to get an education. Look forward to this year. It's going to be an exciting year. I've already seen the freshmen. We need to hang on just a little bit. They're coming at us. They're a great group, all, like all of our students. Thanks again, and have a great 2022-2023. Thank you.